Um, yeah, falls asleep with me. I don't want to put anybody to sleep. Everybody should, like... I mean, you could nap to this stream. I still get the view, so it still counts, so it's okay. <laughs> but I prefer you to learn something. So, Seven Daily Sense was shot last year, May of 2019. It was edited for, uh for six weeks, I believe. We got a version of it uh, that was completed. There's, uh, I think it's like 12 minutes long. It's in here somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's like 12 minutes long. It was, this scene was not in it because this is a scene that is very centered on side characters. Um, and in a 12 minute short, especially for a film festival cut, I just couldn't justify keeping it. Because in a film festival cut, you're supposed to get really, really, really to the point. Or else, if you have too many extra loose threads or whatever, they will use it as an excuse to not accept your film to the film festival and you'll get, you'll get less screening. So the shorter the better, the more straightforward the better, side plots and stuff discouraged. So I left this scene out, even though it's a lot of fun and it really highlights Shannon Strucci, who is on our uh, charity live stream. We played Shannon's game Small Island Woes uh, and talked a little bit about uh, Shannon's work with Critical Role and other D&D uh, &D stuff. So Shannon plays the bartender uh, who's named Austin because we had Austin's Publix name tag to, to, to put on Shannon because Shannon was playing the bartender. And uh, this scene also has Maximilian as Seth, has Tiare as Seth's girlfriend Mag, and uh, Graham Edwards uh, as Seth and Mag's boyfriend, Jared. They are a thruple, a threesome. So uh, it's just a little fun scene. Uh, it mostly actually focuses on Graham as Jared. They talk a little bit back and forth, Shannon and Graham, who Shannon and Graham are friends. They came together. They work um, together on a few things. And uh, they have a really fun on-screen chemistry because they know each other so well. So that's kind of the setup for this scene. Uh, like I said, it was cut from the original film, and I knew that I was going to cut it before I even edited it. So I've never, I've never edited the scene at all. Um, I just basically put all this footage aside and said I don't have time to deal with that right now. And I knew that I wanted to add it back into the YouTube cut. Uh, because I want to show off Shannon and also it's just a fun little scene um, and you know more more content the better right so this will be kind of your first look at uh, at since and to see kind of the process I go through for making a film but also the process for um, you know the, some of the struggles because I know that there are struggles in this scene all of since had the struggle of sound uh, the sound editing was very difficult. So in addition to, um, you know, playing an Adobe Premiere today, I'm sure we're also going to be playing an Adobe Audition and doing some sound editing and sound cleanup stuff, which I'll probably have to pause the music for that part so I can really hear. And, and doing sound editing with earbuds is highly discouraged. You should really do it with like a nice pair of headphones. Um, but I'll, I'll go gentle on it today to make sure I don't overdo it. Um, all right, so... Another unusual thing about this scene is we shot all of this film, all this, you know, 15, 16 pages of script in about 13 hours. We did it in one day of shooting. Uh, so we don't really have that much footage of any scene. There's only, you can see, I guess, 10 or 11 minutes of footage, uh, raw footage of this scene, which is very unusual. With Detroit Evolution, you know, we would have 30 to 40 minutes, you know, per scene to go through so it's not going to take us very long to go through all this footage and get something together because we don't really have that much to work with um but i will say that if you go to the actual um i can i, can, I guess i can start from the kind of beginning so what we do is uh import all of this footage this is the format of red uh it is red raw footage you you import all that into um adobe premiere and then you import in all of your exterior sound. So this task cam, this is our mixer, where every actor had a lapel mic on him, and then we also had a boom mic. And then this blue is the uh, 
the on-camera audio. It was the cam. It was the audio that was captured directly from the red, uh, which I think in this case might have also been the. We did some weird things with the sound on this. We didn't know what we were doing. We had never worked with a red camera before. Uh, Jonathan Strayton was our cinematographer on this, not Brett Mullen. Uh, Jonathan's a great guy. He directed a film called Night of Something Strange and uh, a really cool film coming up called Johnny Z, which is heavy, heavy action film. I've seen a rough cut of it. And uh, even though I don't know what it looks like in its final form, I think it's going to be fantastic. It was really, really um, beautiful, and the action is just impeccable in it. Um, but Jonathan did a great job shooting this. Aaron Ciotti was our lighting director, as was the lighting director on uh, Detroit Awakening and uh, all my films before live scream as well. He's Kristen's husband. And so the two of them worked together to achieve this lighting design, this bisexual lighting design. I believe that this is already a little bit post-color grading because we haven't added any actual effects to it. But as I talked about last week, red footage, you, you, you edit directly on the master file. So um, I'm going to move myself down here so you can kind of see what I'm working on. This footage here, if we go back to as shot, you can see what came out of the camera. Oh, I guess I haven't done anything to this yet because, uh, yeah, I haven't ever looked at this footage at all. So this is, this is right out the camera. Oh, that one's different. I must have used that footage for something else. Undo. Yeah, so this is a little bit uh, graded. And then if we go back to right out the camera, it's a little different. But it still looks really beautiful coming right out the camera. I mean, if this is, if this is as shot, if this is what we had out of the camera, you can tell that this is already really, really good. So I, I haven't even had to edit, um, you know, color edit a lot of the stills that I've posted for since they are raw um, because we managed to do all of this in camera, all this beautiful lighting and fog and stuff. Yeah, lighting has everybody swooning. It is really pretty. I was, this is the first time I ever shot a film that I did not have to uh, do the cinematography for it myself because this I shot about two to three months after Detroit Awakening last year, and Detroit Awakening was the last film I myself did the cinematography for. It was very nice having uh, a cinematographer for this, so I didn't have to divide my attention between camera and directing, especially because you can see we got all these extras in the background. We had like 25 extras on set this day. That was a lot to manage. Also, we threw this film together in like two to three weeks. I ended up like two and a half weeks before we shot the film. I'm not even sure I had a script finished. I think that's like when I finished the script and then a week and a half before we cast it and got the location. And then that 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 other week was spent like getting together catering and extras and everything. It is unbelievable how fast I threw this movie together, um, which made things a little bit chaotic. And I was already very burnt out during this time in my life. And I don't really remember this day a whole lot because I just remember being stressed and worried about being behind schedule because we like ran behind two hours the entire day. Uh, but we got it, we got it in the can and, uh, and we have a, a film. So like I said, you would import the red footage. Uh, red cameras are really cool. They are like the Apple of cameras. They're very proprietary. Every SD, you can't use normal SD cards with them. You have to use special thousand dollar red mag SD cards. So they have all this crap that comes along with them. So hiring somebody who already has all that you know, apparatus is really the way to go because then I don't have to worry about it and I get the benefit of having 4K raw red footage, which is really beautiful and very cinematic. And I don't have to shoot it myself. I don't have to invest in the equipment and I can use Jonathan's uh, talent and expertise. And I, I will never go back to not having a cinematographer <laughs> at this point. Brett, Brett is my ride or die now. Um, Jonathan and I, was great, but Brett, uh, Brett and I really can just read each other's mind. And Brett also does have some extra rigging and stuff that, that really um, makes him more prepared to take on cinematography jobs, I think. But I would like to work with Jonathan again at some point, for sure. All this sounds like a foreign language to me. Well, so Red is a brand of camera. It's That's all it is. Um, it's just a brand of camera. Um, you know, there's some other brands, Canon, Panasonic, or, you know, big ones you've probably heard of. They make cinema cameras. Blackmagic, they make cinema cameras. Uh, and then Blackmagic is probably the main competitor of Red. A lot of people swear by it. 
I have been nervous about black magic. I've never used it. I've heard that it can be very temperamental in Premiere. And I was worried about that when I first started editing since. I was worried, this is my first time editing red footage. I've heard that the footage size, the file size was huge, that the 4K was gonna like not wanna load, that it was gonna tax my computer a lot. Uh, but I found that it was actually very easy. And, and just this effects panel over here, being able to to have this much control over the color and stuff right on the raw footage, I, I never want to go back to typical DSLR footage. Like this, I want this to be everything that I ever do because I, I, I am so spoiled by being able to push, you know, just pushing like the red up a little and that just brings out the pink tones more or being able to bring down the blues and that's gonna bring up the contrast because we're, we're basically taking this like blue halo here and we can just like get rid of it without affecting the rest of the image, right? That's really cool. Or we can bring it up and make it even extra hazy and extra blue, but it doesn't ruin the skin tones to do that. This is, I, I love this so much. And I had a lot of fun with this editing Detroit Evolution, which was also footage that came out of a red, although that was 5.5K anamorphic. Going back to a film that is shot in essentially 16 by nine aspect ratio. This is your typical YouTube, like web format aspect ratio, right? Um, this is a little jarring for me because I'm so used to seeing Detroit Evolution, which we shot in ultra widescreen, very cinematic aspect ratio. And now I'm like, man, I wish we had done that with this because it would have looked so much more cinematic. It looks just like a YouTube video at this aspect ratio, whereas like Detroit Evolution looked like a film because of the aspect ratio, that big, like, you know, cinemascope aspect ratio. <laughs> So yeah, so my first step was bringing everything into Premiere. I have this, uh, this, actually I think I have, I think what I did first, I have a, a this here. Yeah, so sound sync, this is my first timeline. So this is just dumping everything by scene. So, just all the footage from this scene and all of the audio, but none of it synced. It was just sort of like, I went through every file, you know, and kind of looked at it and tried to figure out what order it went in. And this is just me like putting it in some sort of order. And then we do string out, which is uh, actually pairing up the audio sources with the video sources. And so like, this is the scene that I'm about to do. Um, although I can, I can play over here in a scene you haven't seen yet. Oh, that's a shot of Shannon. This is actually also a deleted scene. This is not gonna make it into the final film, um, but you'll see this on Patreon in September, I think. I also borrowed pieces of this scene for another, I, like I cannibalized some of this footage for another scene, uh, which I told you guys last week on the editing stream for Detroit Evolution that since is a Frankenstein of a movie, I cannibalized like three different scenes, combined them into one, I would take footage from scenes that you know were left out and put them in other scenes like I did all this stuff to make the movie work it was one of the biggest editing challenges of my life because having to shoot a movie this um this fast this much movie this fast we didn't have a lot of t we, we really didn't have enough time to get all of the coverage we wanted to get so uh yeah this is really cute <laughs> I'll definitely be sharing, uh, th this dialogue was a little cute. I'll be sharing this on uh, Patreon at some point. But what you can see here is um, I've got four different audio sources. I know that we slated, so we can go back and find the slate. And again, those of you who were here last week with Detroit Evolution, this is familiar to you. You can see, can you already see where the slate is? Uh, I taught you this last week, it's that spike in the audio you can see it right there so this is how i synced everything i would bring everything in i've also this was the first uh the first film that i bothered doing is this music a little too loud i'm wondering let me turn it down. there we go let's turn it down a little let me know i don't want it to, i don't want it like drowning me out all right if it's too quiet now, then let me know. But um, So I, this is the first movie that I color-coded stuff on. 
I did, I did, uh, each color is a different microphone, so I could keep track of it later, which was very important because each of their microphones had a very, very different sound by the end of this, and I'm glad I was able to keep track. But purple is TRA's mic, blue is the on-camera microphone, uh, this is Maximilian's microphone in red, and this is Graham's microphone in green. And I kept that consistent through the whole timeline. And then later on when you'd have like, uh, like orange was Michael, uh, I think this shade of green, this dark green is Shannon. And then blue is he who shall not be named, which we'll talk a little bit about that later because I have something fun to show you in regards to that. I'm going to show you what's been taking this movie so long. I played with Ele Element 3D last night, and I think I've got my visual effects going. Uh, I, I, have, I have a VFX test to show you, so that'll be a little later. Um, so, yeah, Brittany Slated, lovely first assistant director, Brittany. Uh, she was hired to do behind-the-scenes videography on this movie. She became my assistant director, and after this, uh, she will never not be my assistant director because she rocked the house. What's funny is that that's not synced at all. Maybe it's just because I'm... Oh, I love how Aaron is also running in the background here. Lighting guy, Aaron. But yeah, so you go through and you do all that to all the footage. You sync up all the slates and then you get your nice little string out here and you have everything in front of you to work with. And all these little markers here, these green guys, uh, is designating each scene. So this is scene two, this is scene one. I think I can show you. Oh, yeah, I can show you this scene. This is scene four, which ends up becoming scene two. It's all just upside down. Uh, and then this is the scene we'll be editing later today. Actually, you know, Shannon did not have a microphone of their own, so... Uh... Hey, everyone. Yes, Brittany. It's Brittany, bitch. Hey, Joe. <laughs> I saw my chat flying and I was like, what happened? Am I being raided? And it's like, no, everybody's happy to see Joe. <laughs> and thank you, Maddie, for, for cheering earlier. I see that now. All right. So um, what I... It's funny now that I go back to this because there's so many techniques that I developed in making this film that I carried over to Detroit Evolution. And it's a good thing that I did because uh, it helped keep me organized. But this was the first film that I decided to do different uh, scene sequences. So you can see down here, I have so many files open right now. Please close my sound file. I don't close this. Yeah, so you see here, uh, we have all the different sequences have their own, uh, their own timelines, I guess. Scene seven was considered, scene seven had a couple different parts to it, but I, had, I barely had any footage for it. So I guess I just put it all in the same sequence. Um, but yeah, so I had, I edited every scene in its own sequence. And so today I've, I've started a new sequence that's just called deleted scene. And this is what we'll be editing this scene in. All right. Um, so before I dive into this, I do want to share what I was talking about just a second ago in terms of uh, why it has take me this movie so will take me so long to finish this movie for YouTube. Um, it's not just a matter of editing the scene today, although this was a little bit of it. Um, the major issue with this movie is that a good three to four minutes of running time features FaceTime and voice of an actor that I no longer want in my projects ever again. And so we've had to sort of figure out how do we finish the movie and, and give you guys a version of the movie where you don't have to see or hear him. And uh, Austin, to Austin's credit, was the one who came up with a fantastic idea because he plays a character who is an idiot musician to basically put a daft punk helmet on him the entire movie and then re-record his dialogue with a different actor and then like vocode it and um so basically the entire performance except from the neck down will be erased and replaced with something better austin is a genius uh the thing is though i have to learn how to do that now the vocoding is easy he's only got like seven or eight lines actually in the whole film uh, but the putting a helmet on an actor for about 20 to 25 different shots in the movie and matching this 
very specific lighting is uh, difficult for somebody who is not a professional VFX artist. However, um, I learned how to do it. And uh, there's a plugin on After Effects called Element 3D that allows you to use uh, 3D objects in After Effects. I downloaded this last night. It was $250. <laughs> I probably could have just hired somebody to do it for that, but I figure learning is a good experience. Um, and I played around with it and I did a test. And basically what I did, I have not designed the helmet yet. I'm gonna actually like try to get a good model for that and, and, and really dive into the textures and do some fun stuff with the textures of it. But I did a test with Element and After Effects last night with a free like helmet object and some free textures to see if I could get the tracking to look good, to see if I could get it to blend into space, to see if I could get the reflections and the lighting right. Uh, I haven't nailed it yet. Oh, thank you, Bigfoot, with rating with the party of eight. Um, I haven't nailed it yet. I've literally only done this for a couple hours, uh, and this is a Stormtrooper helmet, so uh, bear in mind that... Uh, this this is not what the helmet will look like in the final film uh but but it's it's coming along so this is a uh a starting like test just to see if i could get it to blend into space uh this is not movement this is a still and then i have uh i have uh, some moving footage so this is just, I, I'm still not like 100% happy with it. I think it can be better. I'm going to hit up some of my VFX friends to see if I can get the movement more natural, if I can get the blending and like the reflections better. But it's promising. It's a promising start. Uh, yeah, it's the Stormtrooper helmet because that's what was free. So I just downloaded one to test it. Um, I, what I'm actually going to do, uh, the actual design is uh, I'm probably going to have him have like a... a how many of you have played Borderlands and seen Zero? He's got like a blank face that has LEDs on it and he could put emotes like on his face through the LEDs. I think I'm going to do something like that. And I know how to do that. So, uh, so yeah, he's, I think his actual helmet in the film is going to be more like that. This was just a test to like a lighting and, and tracking test to see if I could actually manage to get it to work in 3D space. Um, but yeah, I think after, after a couple hours of work, it's not bad. I think it's coming along. Um, I feel good about this. Uh, and if not, I can always go to, uh, I can go to my friend, John Hizzle. Everything is blurry. That's on your end, mom. <laughs> Twitch is lagging. Make sure your, your aspect, your, your resolution is high or your Wi-Fi is. And, and I'm sure that like after the, um, after the actual film comes out, I might do a VFX stream where I walk through like how I did this. Um, I'm still learning. A lot of it is just like trying to play with doohickeys and knobs and seeing if they work. One thing I like about this though is I figured out how to get the reflection. Like this is this guy's face. So I've actually gotten the reflections of the environment, which is pretty cool. Um, can we please make DE with Star Wars character helmets? Just put stormtroopers on all the characters. I don't know. But honestly, if it doesn't get any better than this, I don't... It's not the end of the world. It's a very... It, this is a fantasy comedy movie. A character walking around with a Snapchat filter on his face is not that weird. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's not, like, necessarily going for realism, necessarily, so... Uh, I want it to look good. I don't want it to look distractingly out of place, but if it looks a little unusual and a little off, I, I don't, you know, it's not the end of the world. And again, I'm not a professional VFX artist. I have, I've never used this program before. I have no idea what I'm doing. I was literally just like playing with knobs until it looked good. And even this, I think uh, a lot of this was like premiere stuff too. Cause like the baseline footage out of After Effects was like less blended. And then I, I added some like lighting effects in Premiere itself to try to get it to blend better. And you can play with highlights and stuff to like bring down contrast and things. Like if I really wanted to go like stylized with it, I bet I could uh, could make it look like really, 
really natural, but I don't want to go too stylized. I don't want to like Tarantino it. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, look forward to this. This is a this is my solution. Thank Austin for being brilliant uh, and wish me luck trying to do this to like the 25 different freaking shots that this jerk is in my movie. <laughs> but I, I also hope that this reassures a lot of you that uh, if you've been worried about having to overcome that mental hurdle to watch this movie, you're not going to have to because you don't have to see or hear him. Not at all. I'm going to have to a lot to do this VFX work, but you don't have to. I'm doing it so you don't have to. Excited for the Stormtrooper parody. Should that be my crossover day? Should that be crossover day of, uh, of DE Art Fest? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, taking one for the team. Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> but hey, I couldn't stand to put him in the movie either. Like, I don't even like going back and watching the, uh, the movie, uh, as it is. Like, I, this is, this is good for me too. This will, this will completely fix the movie for me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, on to funner things. Like the deleted scene. Let's, uh, this is the chill part of the stream where I shut up and just work. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you, you, feel free to throw questions in the chat. Um, they don't even have to be about editing. I might just, like, answer stuff if you want. Um, but, uh, it, if you're curious about why I'm doing the things that I'm doing, I'm gonna go my typical method of isolating every line of dialogue and then grouping them, uh, which you've seen the after, uh, You've seen what my timeline looks after I do that. You've never actually seen me do that live before, so that's what this is. I think I'm gonna start with something more entertaining, though. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a wide. It's kind of weird to start in a close-up for this. I want to give you guys some context about like what is actually happening uh, in this scene. So we'll actually start over here with this one, and then maybe I wonder what this is and why it's so short. Maybe they messed up. Maybe this is a blooper. <laughs> Um, let's do that one too. That's also a wide. And Maximilian's close-up is fun. Both of them. This was probably a movie where we had the most, um, uh, bloopers. We have a lot. We have like 14 minutes of it in, you know, one day, which is a lot. Uh, considering I had about an hour for seven days of Detroit Evolution. I think part of the reason is, is because the actors really only had a couple of days to learn their lines or like a week to learn their lines. So this was hard on them. Uh, we didn't have time to rehearse. I mean, but they, they were troopers. They got through it. And today is, uh, remember, DE Art Fest Human AU Day. All Human AU. And then tomorrow, I believe, is 5 plus 1, which I'm really looking forward to. Oh, there we get an ad. And then I don't know what any of this is. What is this? Why is this here? This isn't, this doesn't belong. You do not belong here. This is from a whole different scene. I mean, I guess I thought that I could weave this into this scene somehow. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't belong here. Everybody sing Radiohead in the chat. Uh, I'm going to leave it on mostly Maximilian and Graham's mic sources for this because Tiare's, Tiare's mic was just, like, not great during this whole filming process. Like, for whatever reason, her mic was just very loud and staticky, and I had issues with it, whereas Graham's microphone was very clear and Maximilian's was here and there. What's funny is uh, I actually know some techniques now to make my Maximilian's microphone better that I learned through Detroit Evolution that I did not know at the time. So it'll be interesting to revisit and resound mix this film with some techniques that I didn't have before. So hopefully I'll be able to make it a little bit better than it was. Hey Austin, is Austin in the <laughs> is Austin in the garage waiting to come in? <laughs> Because here's the thing, poor Austin had to go get COVID tested today, and it was a whole ordeal. All right, so let's begin. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll move everything aside for now. 
How many different, uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have basically eight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna color code all this footage. Just so, uh, I know what take everything comes from. Keep that in iris. I just love to color code everything now. Although these labels are ridiculous. Like, lavender, cerulean? What the heck color is cerulean? Like, why don't they just call it what it is? Aqua. Blue. Iris? Iris. What? Dark blue would have sufficed. Forest. Mango. Rose. Like, ugh, lord have mercy. I know you can actually change the names of them. Like, Scott Nicewander, shout out to him. He found out how, but I, I, I don't remember how he did it. All right, so now we know what every take is going to be when we do this later, because we are going to isolate every line and group them together. Austin's still in line to get tested? It's been three hours. Holy God. Yeah, this is why if if you haven't been exposed and you're asymptomatic and you have no reason to believe that you have it, don't just go get tested for fun. Because people who actually have been exposed are having to wait three hours in line. <laughs> Did you see a ghost? Okay, so this, I'm actually going to cut... Um, this part's already in the film. This is part of the scene that I cannibalized, so I'm going to start when Shannon walks on screen. Something like that. Like a really smug ghost with a really nice synthesizer. Do you think his synthesizer is also haunted? I love how you can hear the uh, people just using a chainsaw in the background for no reason. That's why you have a first assistant director like Brittany to go tell him to knock it off. Alright, so this is when and let me let me check the ending. So that's okay, so it ends in the right place. So Shannon walks in. Yeah, that's what the scene needed was a, a table saw going in the background. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here because this is a moment. It's not dialogue, but it's a moment. It's really fun. Come on. I'm also going to make this bigger for you guys. <laughs> Just stares into his soul as, <laughs> as the whipped cream piles on. So this is also going to be an interesting exercise in editing comedy for y'all because this is a scene that definitely requires comedic timing because the raw footage, especially without cuts, is just very dry. It's just very like you can tell that we were going for humor, but things don't really land because there's just no music. There's no like intent behind the crafting of the scene. So uh, yeah, this will be an interesting challenge actually to edit this because... Uh, Getting that right is hard. What the hell is a Godaga? Go go For those who don't realize, he's wearing a shirt that says Godaga. Go this is a work shirt that we made for him. More visible in other shots. What the hell is a Godaga? Go go? That's that line. Oh, it's it's actually Godega. It's a grocery app that I work for. Godega. Uh, my translators are already crying, I'm sure, because this movie is full of puns, including the title of the movie. <laughs> We've had talks about that, actually, about how they're going to come up with um, a, a translated title for Seven Deadly Sense, because that is a pun. You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt? It's... <laughs> In with the in, in with the the uh, the hot takes, Shannon's character. This movie uh, is a pitch for a feature, I should say. 
Um, you might be disappointed when you watch it because it does kind of end on like a, oh man, that ends just as it was starting to get good. I do think it tells a decent story and stands alone as a short, but I think that I hope I hope that it leaves you wanting more. That seems to be the experience that we've had a lot of film festivals. Um, and we want to make this into a full feature length project. This would be one of the opening scenes of that feature. And so there's a lot of like commentary about uh, millennial culture and stuff in this film. I wanted to make a film about synthesizers that was aggressively not about the 80s. It was, it's, it's aggressively millennial. Um, so this scene actually came from that. The scene came from just this concept of like Mag is overworked. Uh, she has a scene earlier that ended up getting cut, but it talks about how she's like bogged down with student loans. And then this is kind of Jared's scene uh, where he is a rideshare worker uh, who works at a bunch of like gig economy uh, apps and stuff. And so uh, this is a little bit of commentary in that, but I had to cut all the social commentary in the film out of the short because it kind of never paid off in the short. It's more for the feature. We were thinking in terms of like the bigger story that we wanted to tell. And uh, yeah, that, that, was the, that was the bigger story. So that's why a lot of this got cut was because it served the feature, but it didn't really serve the short. <laughs> it's, it's actually it's not so bad except today there was this one lady who I delivered groceries to but I also happened to be her rideshare driver the other day and now she thinks I'm stalking her so that's that's fun <laughs> I love how you can tell Maximilian is he he, he breaks that's that's fun. <laughs> I, I I think we were all uh, we we were all <laughs> we, we 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 were we were all uh, trying not to break at this delivery here. Graham Graham is amazing. Uh, so actually, so because this is a long line, uh, I think where I'm gonna cut this is when Shannon walks away. Rideshare driver the other day. That's where I'll split this. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. This scene doesn't have a lot of pieces to it, um, but this is where we'll begin. Now we move on to the next take. And we break it up and we pair it. I know I'm going to have to put more distance between all these pieces. As I say always, when you see me working in Premiere, anybody who professionally, I mean, I'm technically am professional. I, this is how I make money. Um, <laughs> anybody who's really, really trained in Adobe products probably hates watching me do anything because I don't use the shortcut keys and my workflow is so slow. Uh, but this is how I learned. I don't have time to actually take a class. So it's, it's all just self-taught, you know? Do you think his synthesizer is also haunted? Okay, so then this is Shannon's walk-in. And we'll cut it at the whipped cream. Yeah, there's a proper word. He's... <laughs> Mom, I don't use shortcuts and I took classes. Well, that makes me feel a little better. Okay, so... I just love the sound of it. That's going to be so much longer in the edit. I'm going to just really drag out the clips. I'm, I'm gonna like cut right before Shannon pulls it up and then just do a full on take of Maximilian's close up. So you just hear this for like 10 seconds. <laughs> just an absurd amount of whipped cream on this Brandy Alexander. I'm already thinking ahead to uh, once we get everything in its place and once we get all of these uh, pieces of footage back to back to look at, I'm already thinking I, I like this take better and I'll be able to explain why. So this is probably the oh, why. It's actually go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. So that's unfortunate that the sound cut out there, but that's a t that would be a reason for why I would take his audio from a different take and put it under this one because his sound messed up. 
You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt? It's, it's not so bad, except today there's this one lady who I delivered groceries to, but I happen to be her rideshare driver the other day also. <laughs> I love that. So now she thinks I'm stalking her. So that, that was fun. I, I wanna I wanna extend this so you can actually hear the fact that I break. <laughs> <laughs> I love Graham. He's very, very funny. He actually does a lot of stand up comedy. You can follow him on uh, Twitter at Sam with two M's Severin. There's a film called What We're Reading Today that he and Shannon did that is just it's one of my favorite things to go back and rewatch, but it, sh but they haven't put it on YouTube yet. There's no way for me to like share it because I would I quote it constantly. If you've ever heard me say, "Have you ever heard of books?" That's from what we're reading today. So I just you know I quote a movie that nobody has been able to see. <laughs> if there was some way I could like acquire it and distribute it, I absolutely would. I don't know if Shannon would let me, especially because Shannon doesn't actually like own, uh, like I think um, Devin uh, last name's escaping me. The director's name is Devin, uh, who I don't know, and I think he would be the one to talk to about actually spreading the word. But oh man, it's so so good. Something like that, uh, like a really smug ghost with a really nice synthesizer. Okay, starting at Shannon's entrance. Do you think his synthesizer Oops. is also haunted? Okay. Shannon's entrance. This music is so, like, sad. <laughs> I wonder if I just skip to something more like not sad. Huh. Wait. I want to make sure we're in the right... Are we on a playlist still? Is this okay? Oh, shoot. We actually went through... Our... Really? That was only like 10 minutes of music? <laughs> God. Well, I hope... Twitch doesn't come after me. Let me find another playlist. Lo-fi. Twitch. Playlist. Mm, this is from... When was this playlist made? I can never trust it. I, I wanna I wanna verify that everything is okay. Can I find one of those like lo-fi no copyright music dubstepped? Oh it's oh it's just live. Okay, cool. I don't really want dubstep though. Stream beats, lo-fi. How long is this? Oh, 243 tracks. There we go. That'll keep us for a while. Nice! Alright, cool. Loop the music, Michelle. Eh. I'll, 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 I'll know that it's being looped and it'll be distracting. Alright. Back to editing. So Shannon's just walked in. It's like, you can't give me a 10 minute playlist and say loop this, like, fuck you. Like, <laughs> like that's, 10 minutes is not a playlist, okay? I need like, you know, if, 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 if you give me an hour playlist, I'll loop that. 
Ten minutes might as well be one song. What the hell is a Godaga? Alright, what the hell is a Godaga? Oh, it's it's actually Godega. It's a grocery app I work for. You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. It's it's actually not that bad, except today there was this one lady. <laughs> That's when Michael Smallwood walked into the front door, triggered the alarm, and ruined that take. <laughs> I delivered groceries to, but I happened to be her rideshare driver the other day too. Y'all with the synth puns and jokes in the chat, I see you. And, well, now she thinks I'm stalking her. So, so that's not... I wonder why it cut off here. I might have cut it earlier, or maybe they broke. So, so that's, that's fun. <laughs> Oh, I, I gotta keep that just awkward silence at the end. That's, that's fun. <laughs> oh, the longer it goes, the funnier it gets. I have a weird sense of humor if you haven't, if you haven't noticed. We wanted this movie, when, so Austin and I co-wrote this movie together, and we talked about it for a very long time before we actually put it to paper, but... There was a lot of, uh, we were very inspired by Edgar Wright, who did Scott Pilgrim and uh, also Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, uh, and also um, the one I like the best, World's End. I think his humor is very quick and also a lot of like background characters doing everything. One thing I noticed about my films up to this point is that the world did not feel like it existed beyond the frames of the uh, of the side of the screen. That there was the world just didn't feel lived in. So one thing I wanted to do in this film is be able to create a lot of background characters just doing stuff. Just like every background character had like a personality, literally I printed out backstories for every extra and handed them to every extra as they walked through the door. And I was like, this is your backstory, act on this. Because I wanted all of the people there to not just feel like, you know, props that eat. I wanted them to feel like they all had a purpose of being there and they all were doing something different and had their own little backstory. So that was cool. And we also like, there's multiple um, times in the film where you can see somebody doing stuff in the background like even uh, in that little VFX test that I showed you, the the old guy sitting at the bar beside uh, Shannon and 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 Brian, um, were were like he has a moment, even though he didn't have any lines, he has a really fun uh, hysterical moment in the film. So that's a lot of humor for me was just finding ways to get these background characters to do interesting things. Yeah, I used an RPG quest generator to make the backstories for the extras. So I didn't like write them all from scratch. We just used like a little um, character builder thing. Did you see a ghost? There we go. Something like that, like a really smug ghost with a really nice synthesizer. Do you think his synthesizer is also haunted? <laughs> He tries so hard not to break. You gotta love him. All right, Shannon's entrance with cream time. Actually, this goes on for a bit longer. All right, whipped cream time. <laughs> What's up with this bartender, right? Third car ran out of gas at the COVID line? Ugh. What the hell is a go to go? Uh, 
Oh, it's it's actually GoDega. It's a grocery app I work for. I think the reason we did two close-ups of Maximilian here is probably because we had a lot of reflection in his glasses, and she it was also a kind of in frame a little bit more. I think we ended up reframing this, so it was a little bit more uh, more balanced, just kind of a better framing than this. Oh, I guess it's not that different. I think I think this might have had like a line mess up. I don't know. We did multiple takes of. I think we did like two takes of every uh, setup just for safety. We did not play it very safe on Detroit Evolution. We really just we would just one person close up nailed it first take. All right, moving on. You know, we would not do multiple takes. You know that the exploitation of low wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. Stream beats. Oh, these are all stream. Okay, so these, yeah, okay. Just making sure my music's all on the up and up. Oh, Arden's joining in with the synth puns, huh? <laughs> it's it's not so bad. Um, so <laughs> today there's this one lady who I delivered groceries to. If I happen to be her rideshare driver, the other day also. Oh, Maximilian. <laughs> I think this is why he got nominated for uh, an award for this performance. He got nominated for Best Actor Genre Blast for this film. Um, and now... And now she thinks I'm stalking her. So, that was, that was fun. <laughs> Oh, I I remember he had just the toughest time with Graham. He's just like, God, he's so funny. I can't stand it. I think my I think I probably uh, it'd be interesting to see if he's less uh, animated on the next take because I think the re I think I'm almost certain I went to him after this close up and I was like, uh, all right, uh, not so Jim Carrey. Uh, bring it down a few notches. <laughs> bring down your re your reactions a little bit. Be a little more subdued, cause and and he'll tell you that it's the theater in him. He just brings out the theater by default, especially because I think, I f no, he hadn't been working. He had taken like a month off uh, at this point, so he he wasn't just coming off something. I know when we were rehearsing Detroit Evolution, there was one day where like he he literally came from a performance on stage into a rehearsal and the first couple takes of that he was like oh i got to like turn off my theater brain and become nines again because it's such a different different experience but yeah so so let's see how this uh this close up looks if it's a little less uh it's a little more subdued Okay, Arden, but that, that pun doesn't work because it's pronounced Moog, not Moog. Ha. <laughs> Did you see a ghost? Something like that. Like a really smug ghost with a really nice synthesizer. I also want to point out this choker here. We had to glue. We had to put a like a a dab of glue in between the uh, the the hoop and the the mechanism here because it was rattling so much because he's so animated it was just jiggling constantly and and really throwing off the uh, the sound so we put some glue in there to kind of mute uh, the metal against metal sound. Do you think his synthesizer is also haunted? All right, Shannon's entrance. Nice. Back to the whipped cream. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's a that's a shot. <laughs> Go 
I think it's so funny that Seth ordered a Brandy oh, it's, Alexander. It's actually Go Dega. It's, uh, it's a grocery app I work for. You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt? <laughs> oh, Gamer says, uh, I, I love Seth with all my heart already. Actually, I, this is kind of a cool uh, first way to meet these characters, I think, and give you a, a peek at like what they're it's like. It's not so bad. Except there was this one lady today who I delivered groceries to, but I happened to be her rideshare driver the other day also. How dare they walk away in the middle of my monologue? And now she thinks I'm stalking her. So, so that's, that's fun. And I think, I think for whatever reason, this continued into the next scene, but I, I've used this in the film already, so I probably won't keep it. Wait. Yeah, so this next part uh, is not part of this scene. It's already in the movie elsewhere. I'm not actually sure where I'm going to put this scene in the film yet. I think I have an idea of where it can go. Probably where it was originally intended to go. Look, we're making rainbows. I just like to make my timeline. That's all I do. It's just for the aesthetic. Just make little, little rainbows. I didn't used to be this organized <laughs> in my edits. My timelines used to be complete disasters, but then I would just get so lost. And when you're doing a feature length project like Detroit Evolution, the, that is just, you, you can't work like that. So yeah, I'm really glad that I uh, developed this technique uh, and color system when I was working on this film because it really helped <laughs> when I was working with a 75 minute project and 10.5 hours of raw footage. What would the actual seven deadly scents be? Like disaster scents? Well, uh, one of them is a Yamaha CS80. Sloth, because it always has to be repaired and can't get its shit together. Uh, and then Greed is the Moog MS-20, which is painted gold. I don't know why Austin picked the Moog MS-20 for Greed. Maybe he could explain that. Uh, Lust was like a... In real life, it was like the top of a, a harmonium, but I don't remember what our headcanon was for like what actual model it was. And then uh, War was a briefcase synth and had like a, a big red nuclear button like on it, which is really cool. We bought all the props for it, but didn't have time to build it. And then uh, Envy, which is in the film, we built I covered a Casio in Warbla and bought a bunch of fake buttons and made it look like a Juno... Uh, Juno 60? I made it look like a Juno. Um, I don't know why we picked a Juno for that either. Austin kind of told me what sense to make all the sense. Juno 60, yeah. Hey, Julia. And then, uh, Gluttony is, uh, oh my god, what are they called? Giant scents that fill a whole room. <laughs> what the hell is a Godega? Big, unwieldy things. It's, the uh, first synthesizers that were in the early 1900s. Actually, Go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. And people kept walking through the front door and ruining our takes. You know that the exploitation of low wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. This sound is so much less bad than I thought it was. You know, maybe I could just live with. 
I don't know. I, I'm I'm redoing the entire sound mix for this movie uh, in order to release it on YouTube, and we'll see what happens. It's actually not so bad, except today there was this one lady I delivered groceries to, but I happened to be her rideshare driver the other day also. And now she thinks I'm stalking her. So that was fun. <laughs> so you might wonder, okay, Shannon walked off screen. Why am I keeping this? This is nothing. Um, because I'm keeping the audio. The audio is clean. So if I have clean audio, then I still keep the take because I still might be able to use it for its sound, even if I don't use it for its video. Austin's gonna have to synthesize some stream beats for me. Actually, Austin has to do the entire score for this movie because this movie was never custom scored. Another thing that we kind of had to rush at the end was we had to uh, put a bunch of stock music in the film as its score. And I've never heard this, the, the film with like a custom score for it. I think it'll make a big difference. All right, making more rainbows. Gonna make more space between my rainbows. Okay. Move. Move. I think that's enough space. I think that's enough space. These need a little more space. We only have a couple more to do, and then we'll be able to compare footage, which will be a lot of fun to show you exactly how a scene gets built. Action. Turn up the beats. Yeah, these are these are a little more quiet. Yeah. Disney Plus. Not that loud. No, PM not Plus. Disney Plus. No, I'm not letting you get free advertising on my stream. Shut up. <laughs> Disney, you get enough. That's a little louder. How's that? Let me know if it's too loud. I don't want to overwhelm the dialogue. Sorry, guys. It's actually Go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. I wonder if I was just like so weirdly burnt out and you know that the exploitation obsessive when I edited this film last time that the the sound it, like it wasn't that bad and I just freaked out and over edited the crap out of it and did all this work that maybe I didn't need to. Because I, I thought that this was just unusable garbage, just awful. And now I'm listening, I was like, yeah, there's a little background hum, but it's it's really not that bad. You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt? It's not so bad. Except today there was this one lady who I delivered groceries to, but I happened to be her rideshare driver the other day also. Now she thinks I'm stalking her. I think he maybe didn't include the final line. Okay, no, he didn't. I think this So That's Fun might have been improv now that I think back on it. Because do know, we do realize that Shannon's close up was what we shot first. So. Maybe it was improv in like a later take. So you might 
I, I'm glad I edited this in the order that I did, so you can kind of get an impression of like the thought process behind shooting. So we we got a close up of Maximilian. We because he had to react to the frosting, you know, the whipped cream on his Brandy Alexander. We needed to get a reaction shot of that. Uh, we got a few wides, like master shots of everybody. Uh, we got, you always want to start with that. You always want to start with like a, a master shot, like a wide, um, and then and then move in, punch in close-ups after. Uh, and then we did a close-up of Shannon, of course, as well, because Shannon has dialogue. Uh, we don't have any close-ups, I don't think, of Tiare, because Tiare doesn't say anything in this scene, so she was covered by the wides. Um, but I'm wondering what all this is, because I, I don't really know, and I don't know why the audio... Why we don't have audio in this first... It, like, I guess the mics didn't turn on until here. So I'm gonna turn on Tiare's mic. It's not very good, but we'll, we'll do it for posterity. Hey, just truce in the chat. Well, at least there's not really uh, any dialogue here at this part. But you can see how much uglier Tiare's microphone is. It's very like loud and AC. What the hell is a go digger? It's actually go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. You know that the exploitation of low wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing. There's a little bit of echo on Shannon's mic, um, which leads me. I don't know that. No, not you. Not, no. <laughs> um, so this has drifted a little, so I gotta fix that. And there we go. It's actually not so bad. This thing's got a little out of sync. It's actually not so bad. Except, today there was this one lady who I delivered groceries to, but I happened to be her rideshare driver the other day also. And now she thinks I'm stalking her. So that's fun. So that one's a little different. Shannon actually leaves at the end. Um, I guess we just did that for variety. <laughs> so that's kind of good to have. So sometimes you just have alt takes of things that you can play with. I am really curious what these are because I I do not know. I'm wondering if they're outtakes, if they're we didn't get through a full scene, or if they're like from a different scene. I did have bits and pieces from a different scene in this timeline originally, so. And like I said before, you know my audio it's didn't YouTube work. Music. Download the app today and get a trial of Music Premium on us. Restrictions apply. My uh, my audio like didn't work on these takes for whatever reason, but the video is still good. So I keep it, and you know, maybe I can pull audio from a different take and put it under. You always want to salvage as much as you possibly can in editing, especially when you have no budget and you know, you gotta work with what you get. There's only 10 minutes of raw footage for this whole scene. So we're not working with a whole lot. All right, let's see what the hell these are. Ah, uh, this is later. Is that a bad thing? So this is a different scene, actually. Yeah, so all that's different. So, all right, we have everything for this scene all laid out, colorful. Now we edit. So you can start chronologically. Um, and, and at this point, I kind of just, I go through, I watch it back to back and it's like, all right, I just start ruling things out, you know? And I do like to back this up. I take this and I, I copy it over here 
just in case, you know, I delete something and then I decide later, oh, actually, no, I, I kind of like that. So this is like my backup and then we go over here and we actually, we actually work. You sure this music's not too loud now? It's too loud for me. YouTube doesn't have a lot of control, like a lot of command over there bar here. It's a little up there. Okay, I turned it down a little. I was just like... Because I don't want to turn down my master volume because then you wouldn't be able to hear the, the movie. All right, back to back. Actually, let's let's not let's start with dialogue. Let's start with something a little bit more straightforward. All right. What the hell's a Godaga? What the hell is a Godaga? What the hell is a Godaga? All right, I can tell you right off the gate. This is better than this. There's a few different reasons for that. One is because Shannon is sort of blocking Graham, and it's just not the best framing, it's just not the best blocking. This is a lot better. And you also have this sort of person sitting here, which adds a little bit more, like, you can tell that there's other people in the world, that it's not just, we're not just shooting in the corner of, like, an abandoned restaurant, that there's actually life here. This is just a better shot. Shannon also does uh, a little bit of a performance choice here and actually kind of leans to the side and actually points at his shirt, which guides the eye uh, more to what it actually says on his shirt, whereas here, his hoodie is kind of, like, covering most of it. Like, you really can't see what the shirt says. Whereas here, it's actually... You know, it's hard to read or whatever, but you can tell that that's what this quest that's where this question is coming from, from Shannon. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely a better shot, a better wide than this. This is very, like, dull and not as good. Also, Maximilian is, like, completely in shadow here, uh, whereas there's a little bit more light on him here. Um, which, and the colors are just better, like, this is just a better shot. So I can already say that in terms of wides, I'm definitely not going to choose this over this. So that's gonna go. But I'm gonna keep the audio just in case. Um, and there's this wide too. This wide's okay. Um, however, and, and don't judge it for being too dark. I mean, we can we can bring that up. So that's not, that's not really the problem. Um, I think it's just the same situation where Shannon's just kind of blocking Graham and it's just not as character driven. I think that this is this is just a really good shot. This is funny. I'm actually gonna screen cap this because this is this is a good shot. So that's my favorite wide. So that's gonna be what I keep. Um, in terms of Maximilian's close-ups, we have two of these. So let's see what his close-ups look like. What the hell is a go to go? What the hell is a go to go? I think. Well, first of all, so Shannon points with both of these, which is good for continuity, because it means that when we change angles, I'll be able to follow that hand, and it won't look weird. So that doesn't really make much of a difference. And again, don't worry too much about color and lighting, because some of these have been color graded, some of them haven't. So that's something that we will fix later. Um, but I am a little curious about maybe what I... Pr I think I like the first one better performance wise actually what the hell is a go to go what the hell is a go to go i think i like this one better because it's more subtle and also he's just kind of a little mystified by them versus being kind of weirdly happy to hear what what graham has to say so between these two close ups i think uh, i think i'm going to go with the first one and then we have three Shannon close-ups. So let's see what Shannon's actually de actual delivery looks like because I'm probably gonna use at least part of their close-up uh, here because this is this is Shannon's dialogue. What the hell is a go to go? What the hell is a go to go? What the hell is a go-digger? 
Now, the deliveries are all pretty similar. These are all a little similar. This is a little bit more like I'm actually looking at the at the shirt. It's a little more muted. And if if it's all the same, you know, to everybody, I uh, I would rather just not use this take because it just doesn't have good audio on it. So if I have something that's almost identical, I'm just going to delete all of this because that audio is not useful. So um, I think I like this one better, this first one. I think that's what I'm going to go with. So now we've narrowed it down to three different takes. I really do like this. I'm probably not going to use Maximilian's close-up on this line, but I'm going to keep it for now just in case. So it's going to be between these two. But I'm not sure yet because I'm not sure what I'm going to pair it up against. And for that, I need to figure out what I'm going to do on Graham's line. Now this is where performance really becomes key, I think, because I think he varies his. Oh, it's it's actually Go Dega. It's a grocery app that I work for. Oh. Oh, it's it's actually Go Dega. It's a grocery app that I work for. I think that this has the same problem as this take had before, where you just can't see him, which isn't as good as this. Oh, it's actually. Go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. Now the sound messed up there, that's not a deal breaker. We can fix that later. So between the two wides, this one again wins. Oh, it's it's actually Go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. He's completely blocked in this, so can't use that. Oh, it's it's actually Go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. Oh, it's, it's, it's actually Go Dega. It's, uh, it's a grocery app I work for. I, it is unlikely that I will use Maximilian's close-up here either. Um, here's the thing about his close-up uh, in terms of this scene. He doesn't say anything, so I can use any part of his close-up and as any reaction. So I can actually use the you know when she's when, when, when shan's talking about how the exploitation of low-wage workers and all that um maximilian i could i could i could put this there i i could i could move this so as long as the footage is good as long as it's quality footage it's in focus i like the the reaction uh, I can I can do anything with this, so that's why this is versatile. Reaction shots are very versatile because you can put them o on, over anything. So what I might do with this is I might just put these aside uh, and just put them like just bin them and say like, oh, I want a Maximilian reaction shot later. I'm just gonna put that and 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 see which one I prefer. It's actually Go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. Y'all talking about vegetables? <laughs> oh, it's it's actually Go Dega. It's uh, it's a grocery app I work for. It's so yeah. I'm gonna bin these. He's gonna be my Maximilian reaction gif pile. <laughs> it's uh, it's actually Go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. So Shannon puts hands on hips here. So that's something to keep in mind for whatever I do next. It's actually Go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. This is same principle as Maximilian. This is also a reaction shot. Nothing is happening. You can put this over anything, but no hands on hips. So I'll have to stick with whatever continuity comes next. It's actually Go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. Now, these are really similar. Let's see which uh, expression I like better. It's actually Go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. It's actually Go Dega. It's a grocery app I work for. Mm. I'm gonna stick actually with this one. Uh, 
Not that I want to point this out, but uh, this is going to be harder to VFX in the background because I got to put a helmet on him even when he's in the background. So if he's in the dark and like half under the table, uh, maybe I can get away with maybe like just cropping this or something. So I'm going to stick with this. This audio sucks, so I'm going to get rid of this. Um, and so we have these. So I have a really nice wide. And then I have two Shannon reaction shots, one with hands on hips, one not. So now we got to see what comes after this. We got to see, all right, what, what's the continuity? What did Shannon do in the wides? Because that's going to determine which close up to go with. You know that the exploitation of low wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bad. You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. So I still like this wide, so we're definitely going to keep that still. You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. So we're not going to stick with that because you can't see anything. This one might be a little tempting. I've been throwing this wide away before. However, I like Tiare's reaction here. Um, you know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. Tiari's very well, well lit here. You know, I don't want to get fucking demonetized because you put copyrighted music in the ads in this playlist, YouTube, please. <laughs> yes, Michelle, editing stream, chat, vegetables. <laughs> All right, so here's another interesting thing about editing. You can see, I don't know if you can see, you can see, up here uh, in the scale, this is at only 66% of its actual size. I believe Seven Deadly Scents was output in 1080p, um, but the footage is actually 4K. So this is, so actually that footage has been zoomed in, so maybe I've been not giving this uh, this shot its its credit because this does actually have a little bit more atmosphere to it as well. However, um, I do still have the issue where Shannon is standing in front of Graham, whereas this is much better, it's much better framing. But I do like Tiare's reaction. So if I go to 100, this is full resolution. I can actually crop this and maybe just show the problem with this, though, is that the focus was racked here on the whipped cream, so Tiari is a little blurry. So I don't know if I'd be able to get away with this. But if I'm going to salvage this footage at all, it's going to be for Tiare. So I'm going to maybe just keep this here for now, and, and we'll see what happens. You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. Maybe I can just crank up the sharpen. <laughs> That's actually not terrible. I've seen worse. <laughs> ...of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. <laughs> All right. Oh man, y'all, 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 y'all throwing, throwing off the auto mod, mod again. Exploitation of low wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and. Oh, we don't, we don't need to be on full res. We have one and one fourth, so we can play this. You know that the exploitation of low wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. You know that the exploitation of low wage workers through a cell phone app. Is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. I love the subtlety of this expression. I think I'm gonna leave it here just to keep it in sync with uh, Shannon's performance. This one's a little more random. I could probably put that anywhere, so I'm gonna bank that in my Maximilian uh, reaction reaction bank over here. So hands on hips. All right. 
You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. That is a better delivery. I will definitely keep that close up over the other. <laughs> you know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt? That's a little too angry. Uh, I think that might have been our first take. That's a little too aggressive. I don't want this character to be like aggressive. I want them to be very deadpan. So uh, I'm not gonna go with with that that footage. Um, I'll keep the audio just in case. I'm a pack rat. But I, I think the second one is where it's at. I also think visually, I, th I think I like the framing better. You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. This is a little judgmental, but it's also exasperated. I like that. This one is just a little too matter-of-fact, uh, a little recital. Uh, whereas this is a little more organic, so I definitely think that this is the preferred, uh, the preferred take. Uh, and I don't think there's a whole lot of difference between audio between the two. Um, I'm wondering if it's possible... I wonder what it looks like for me to pull this audio and just see if it feels different. You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. I don't hate it, actually. I don't hate that. So this is an interesting uh, thing to show you guys because sometimes you'll like a take and uh, you're not sure whether it's in the delivery or the body language. And I thought that this was the body language that was selling me on this take when it actually, I think it might've been the audio because putting the audio with this take makes me like this take more. Low wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. And morally bankrupt. of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. Like, I especially like this sort of just, like, expression on Shannon's face. That looks a little concerned. This is more like, you're a fucking asshole. I love that. <laughs> oh, thanks, Joe, for the gift subs. And you'll also get our new music streaming service, YouTube Music. Sign up for the YouTube Premium Student Plan today and get one month free. So, let me actually get this synced in a way that doesn't look terrible. Let me, let me experiment off on the side here. And get this actually lined up with lip sync. It might not work. It might not line up with lip sync. But I do like that expression at the end. I like this, hey, you're full of shit expression. More so than this, I'm concerned about you sort of expression. There's little nuances in the face that you gotta, you gotta pay attention to. Whereas the voice... The voice sells it as being judgmental, which is what I like. Yes, I'm <laughs> just like actively trying to figure out what's going on. Yes, yeah, my chat's <laughs> chat's going nuts. My chat, my chat. Uh. Oh, bits. I was like, <laughs> I got, I got, I got, I got the, 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 his 10 emotes shared thing. Like, I'm just like, what? I don't know what Twitch is doing with these sharing emotes thing. Thank you, bits. Pride emotes. I guess that's how it works through the 15th, the next four days on Twitch. You know that the exploitation. 
Okay, so audio starts, you know, here. Video starts. Here. You know that the exploitation of low wage workers through a cell phone app is both de so that's a little too early. Let me start here. Is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. And morally bankrupt. That's good. Dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. Through a cell phone app. Of low wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. You know that. The and sometimes it won't perfectly sync, but that's okay. You don't have to use the entire take, you know. Exploitation of low wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. So that syncs pretty well, actually. This is different audio with a different video source. I want to watch it back to back with the original audio that went underneath it, just to show the comparison between the deliveries. You'll be watching the same video, but the audio will be different. It does look seamless. It's it it tricks you more than you think it does. You can see that in the Detroit Evolution stream last week. I was editing together three different pieces of audio footage under video, and uh, yeah, and you never know. Like half of Detroit Evolution is like this. So let's compare this first one. This is OG audio as recorded during this take. Second one, same piece of footage, different audio. You know that the exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. Exploitation of low-wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. That's the one, for sure. That's definitely better. And what's funny is that, like I said, I was convinced that it was the video that was selling me on this second take, but it's actually the audio. And I like the video from this one better because I like the expressions of Shannon's face. And I think that this just sound that the audio is just a little too exasperated. I like that this is more judgmental. This just comes together to get that character across in the best way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that is definitely gonna be what we use and because I know that this is the take that I'm gonna use both audio and video now I'm still gonna hold on to audio for now like I said I'm a pack rat but I've got the audio also saved remember over here so I think I don't know if I'm gonna I don't think I have the whole take here so I'm definitely going to use most of it though. I'm going to use I'm going to use this close up. Exploitation of low wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. All right. Exploitation of low wage workers through a cell phone app. So, I'm not going to use We already got that. Not gonna use that. I could maybe pair it with a Maximilian shot. Probably not gonna use TRA's close up, but maybe later. So what's gonna go back to back? I'm not gonna pair two Shannon close ups back to back, so continuing with the scene is probably the best approach for now. Because I know that a wide, a wide has to come next. So if a wide has to come next, what wide will it be? It's, it's actually, it's not so bad. Except today there was this one lady who I delivered groceries to, but I also happened to be her rideshare driver the other day. It's, it's not so bad. Except today. There's this one lady who I delivered groceries to, but I happened to be her rideshare driver the other day also. It's, 
it's actually not that bad. Except today there was this one lady who I delivered groceries to, but I happened to be her rideshare driver the other day too. It's it's not so bad. I definitely think I'm going to be pulling one of the other takes because I didn't love the audio delivery on it, either of these, but I know he nailed it on other people's close-ups. So now I'm just looking for visuals, I think. And visually, this is probably the best one because he's being completely blocked here. He's pretty blocked here. Um, so yeah, let's just go with the wide for now and see where we can go from there. So now we're actually going to be pairing pieces of the scene together. <laughs> Joe. I got something about the census. <laughs> Michelle's the audio is Joel's to random junk. Yo, I am. Um, I don't delete any audio sources. It's like, I might use it. I might use that someday. And morally bankrupt. It's it's not so bad. It's it's not so bad. It's not, it's not so bad. Okay, so I better explain my thought process for this. I'm about to do something called a. Ah, is it an L cut or a J cut? I'm actually not sure. It's either an L cut or a J cut. An L cut or a J cut, which I know that there's probably very like specific terminology for which one's L and which one's J, but regardless, um, the reason it's gonna look like this is because we're dragging video over and it kind of looks like L shaped from a certain, you see, you see what I mean? Like the, the gap is L shaped versus if we did it in the other direction, I think it would still be pretty L shaped. So like, I, I don't know. Um, but we're going to have Graham's dialogue be under Shannon's footage to transition and flow into the next shot. It also gives us an opportunity to tighten up his dialogue some because there's a pretty big pause here, and I, I want to make that more snappy for comedy reasons and also just for flow. It's not so bad, except... So, I'm gonna tighten this. Ex here. Ripple deletes allow you to move things over. Morally bankrupt. Oh my goodness! More emotes? Oh my god, Joe! A thousand bits? Lord! This chat's sponsored by Joe! <laughs> it's not so bad. I also think I'm gonna tighten this. And maybe even move a little bit of the accept into the J cut too. It's not so bad, except today there's this one lady. So yeah, that's our first uh, official like edit of this stream uh, uh, of the actual scene coming together. Exploitation of low wage workers through a cell phone app is both dehumanizing and morally bankrupt. It's not so bad, except today there's this one lady. And you can tell that looks just a lot better than going directly into his dialogue. It's not so bad, except today- no, I, I have edited that to the lips because it's, but it's, it's more jarring, right? Like you want a little bit of transition. This is how they're, so this is how editors create flow. We, we put a little bit of audio underneath to make it seem like it connects better. So bad, except today there's this one lady who I delivered groceries to. I think it's about time to get off of this wide uh, around this point in the uh, in the scene. So 
Let's move on to the rest of the footage that we have. Maybe some of the close-ups. Maybe this would be an opportune time for a Seth close-up. So let's see. It's, it's not so bad. Um, Seth, today... I probably won't use a whole lot of this just because it's a little too animated. It's a little too practical joke. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to use much of this shot. Today, there was this one lady who I delivered. <laughs> Unless it's that one. That one's pretty fucking funny. Uh <laughs> oh my gosh, Arden, thank you for the bits. Her groceries too. If I happen to be her rideshare driver the other day also, it's not so bad. Except... That one's a little more subtle. Depends on if you want to go subtle or if not if you want to go not subtle at all. I might try both of them just for the sake of comedy. Oh, Premier, don't you freeze on me, you bitch. Don't you do it. I don't don't give me the LED of death. I've come so far. Oh, now we get the favorite part of editing. The part where I forget to save. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Pray. Worst case scenario, probably have an auto save that doesn't go too far back. No. 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 <laughs> well, this is part of the process, guys. Uh, <laughs> this is this is part of uh, what I have to deal with uh, as an editor of movies. Uh, so you're getting the full experience. I'm already bringing up my autosave, just to see when the last autosave was. When was it? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, autosave. Autosave. Oh, buried in some other file of it. Where we get it? That's not good. Uh... <laughs> What is today? Six, seven? Why, why did none of these say 2020? That's not good. Wait. Maybe it's in another file. Yes, there we go. Uh, 1.29 p.m. So I have an autosave that goes back 20 minutes ago. Could be worse. Alright. Yeah, this doesn't look like it's gonna... This doesn't look like it's gonna go anywhere, so. In task. Okay, so reopening Premiere with the new autosave. We only lost 20 minutes. Hopefully, by that point, I had already gotten my, uh, I probably have to, like, resync Shannon's audio to that other piece of footage, but I think we'll be able to recreate that scene pretty fast. Yes, Premiere, why? Um, open with... Yeah. Mm. Okay, OBS, if you could make my display capture work now, that would be great. I don't, I don't love that that broke my display capture. Oh, thank you, Warden Mages, for this, for the gift subs. Well, here's the problem with window capture. <laughs> so, window capture, you can't see the actual film. Let me... Oh, and Joe with more bits! You guys are trying to get a hype train going. The capture. Man. It's YouTube music. I don't Download want the that. App today and get a trial of music premium on us. Restrictions apply. Man, come on, come come on, OBS, don't. Oh, 
Hold on, let me get off this window for a sec. Nope, that didn't solve it. Well, it'd be great if uh, if Premiere Crashing didn't also break my OBS uh, display capture. I would have to turn off OBS and cut the stream uh, in order to fix this. Well, we're about coming up on the end of the stream anyway, I guess. So <laughs> maybe Premiere made the decision for us. I can say that it looks like yeah, it looks like we we would have to resync our Shannon uh, dialogue to the clip that I clipped. Um, but I hope that this was elucidating anyway. Um, this kind of gave a perspective on how all of this comes together. Uh, I feel like another hour I could probably have a rough cut of this scene arranged. Uh, I was making pretty good progress. And then from there I would go through the sound and pick my favorite sound takes and make sure that I was picking microphones and sound sources that all sounded good flowing together through the scene, that there was no ups and downs of the background noise and inconsistencies that would make the sound not flow together well. Uh, then from there you add background noise, like crowd noise and room tone, any sound effects that might, you know, might add an extra sound effect for the whipped cream in this case, uh, and then color grading and making sure that your color looks consistent and all that. And from there, uh, then it's pretty much done. So yeah, this scene, uh, I think I am going to spend the rest of the afternoon actually finishing this scene so that I can put it in the movie. And then from there, I can get a transcript made for our translators to start working on the translation of the film. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, I, if you're a translator, keep an eye out for that so that we, so, so that you can prepare for, I, I want to give at least like six weeks, uh, for the translators, at least five weeks for the translators to be able to work on the film. Uh, so that means that we're looking at a late August release date for Seven Deadly Synths. Trailer will be coming soon. You can see, uh, you, you could have seen, I had a, a, a timeline open for a trailer cut. I want to get some, uh some Brian with the helmet footage in the trailer. So I got to work on that and figure out like what the helmet design and stuff is going to be too. So it's, it's coming soon. I think, I think it's, it's going to be coming soon. Um, within the next couple weeks or so, I hope, uh, you'll be seeing an actual official trailer for the film. And even without a trailer, you did get to see a little bit of a sneak peek and got to memorize some dialogue from, from the movie today and get a, a little introduction to the characters and what they're going to be like, uh, at least in this brief scene that was cut. So yeah, uh, as always, I have four or well, I have five streams coming up this next week. Apu is on Monday at uh, 2 p.m. I don't believe I have any new merch to announce. I ordered some more. I couldn't help myself. I have two. I have two new things coming, which I will announce when they come in. But I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be next week, not this coming Monday, where I'll get to announce that. Um, this Monday, I guess we'll just be doing fan art of the week, uh, which is excruciating during DE Art Fest. But I get through it, uh, trying to decide between some of the favorite uh, pieces of art this week. Uh, I also have, I think I'm gonna do Jackbox on Thursday. I know a few people who have been interested in doing Jackbox with me, so I'll get you guys an update on Opwu about who will be joining me on that. On Tuesday, we'll be continuing the Stult and mourning Henry and carrying his memory through the end of The Last of Us. I'll, I think I have three more episodes of that, seven, eight, and nine, uh, to finish the game. And this will be seven. So within two weeks, we should be done with that. And then on Friday, we'll be finishing A Way Out with Lemonhead. We did that last night, part two. VOD is coming up to YouTube on Wednesday, but you can check it out on Twitch today. I recommend going to Greg's page and actually watching his VOD because he has higher quality cameras and his sound is pretty good for both of us as well. So that's twitch.tv slash Lemonhead, where you can see the VOD for A Way Out early if you don't want to wait till YouTube. Additionally, today on Patreon, Killer Assistant. I was supposed to be posting yesterday it's been a week um but yeah today i'm gonna be posting killer assistant to uh patreon actually just I, I may as well go do it right after this stream ends so that is a new short film a mockumentary directed by michael whaley uh who is a friend of mine who's helped me through a lot of these films 
It also stars Gunnar Willis, who was in Live Scream. So if you've enjoyed Live Scream, you'll enjoy him in this. It's a mockumentary about personal assistance of famous movie killers. It's about 10 minutes long. It's a lot of fun. So go to Patreon and join up if you're interested in that. All patrons, $1 and up, no matter uh, what your tier, will be able to get access to that today. So let me know what you think about that when you see it. Uh, you can leave some, some messages in Patreon chat and, and talk about the film because everybody will have access to it. So no secrets. Um, yeah. I think that's everything for today. Thanks for hanging out with me and joining me for this chill editing stream. Maybe I'll do more stuff like this in the future. Uh, I don't know if I didn't think I could make this entertaining, but it seems like you guys had fun and were able to entertain yourselves with uh, with some puns and vegetable talk in the chat, as well as, uh, I guess, just the thought process behind how this workflow happens. And uh yeah, I, I think on the road again, I'm going to be doing the editing for that in September and October when we get that together. So maybe I'll do like a live on the road again edit stream uh, in the fall when we get the footage for that. That could be fun. Uh, so yeah, I, I think I think maybe more, more stuff like this in the future uh, if you guys are interested in it. So let me know and give me your feedback in Discord or Twitter or wherever. Uh, I think that's everything for me today. Everybody be good, behave, stay great, hydrate, and have a